The Spanish region of Catalonia held a referendum recently over the past weekend. And the referendum, of course, has to do with the idea of separating from Spain and the central government of Madrid. Now, before I give you the details on how that referendum went and the insane number of people that were injured due to police brutality, I want to share the most recent update, which involves the King of Spain and a very rare speech that he gave today, which which was rather forceful in regard to being against the separatists and you know making statements calling for unity in Spain. Now, King Philippe VI of Spain accused the region's separatist leaders of inadmissible disloyalty and of creating a situation of extreme gravity that threatened the country's constitution and unity. He also said that with their irresponsible conduct, they can even put at risk the economic and social stability of Catalonia and the whole of Spain. Now, quickly, Let's talk about the economic issues at play here. If Catalonia were to separate from Spain, Spain would lose about 20% of its economy. Some of the most wealthy people live in Catalonia. There is an income or wealth redistribution issue there where you know these wealthy earners obviously pay more in taxes. Those taxes are redistributed to you know the poorer communities amongst the Spanish. And another thing to keep in mind is that Catalonia actually has or owes a huge portion of the public debt. And so one argument is that if they separate, they wouldn't be obligated to pay that debt back to the central government. So those are some of the key issues at play here. Now, earlier in the day today, protesters blocked dozens of roads across Catalonia. Farmers used their tractors to cut off highways and demonstrators shut down some of the main roads in Barcelona. The strike, which was backed by the regional government of Catalonia, also also brought the subway system and bus network to a standstill during most of the working day. Now, I want to be clear about something. Although the day that they voted unfortunately ended in turmoil and violence, mainly because of the police response to those protesters, today was largely peaceful. It seemed more as a celebratory day as opposed to a day met with violence. So here is some video kind of showing you what it looked like. And these are individuals who are, again, calling for the separation of Catalonia from Spain. And the people of Catalonia, protesters or voters, were never violent. It was the cops who were violent. Right. And and often the states throughout the world will do this. They'll say, "Oh, we have to, we're worried about the violence." Well, you're the one who started it in the first place. The the court in Spain said that this vote was not legal. I, I'm not a constitutional expert in Spain, so I don't know if that's true or untrue, and if that was a correct ruling or not. But I do know that the government's reaction was disastrous. Absolutely. So if the if the vote is not legal anyway, and the courts have ruled that it's not valid. Why do you have to go in there with batons and shooting rubber bullets at people who are trying to vote and grab them by the hair and drag them out of voting booths? Are you insane? I mean, we're what talking a terrible about counterproductive response. So, and, and we're not just talking about like young, healthy people that were met with violence. There was, uh, you know, footage showing elderly people being dragged out of uh, voting booths and and that type of behavior, which was uncalled for. And there were even um, some of the separatist leaders who admitted to the press that this is essentially a non-binding vote, considering how the courts have reacted to it. Um, but. You know, the central government of Spain really reacted aggressively to this referendum. Now, going back to the referendum, what happened? About 42% of voters showed up to the polls. But part of the reason why voter turnout was so low was because of you know the intimidation tactics by Spain's central government. Now, national police seized millions of ballot papers and also sealed schools and other buildings to be used as polling stations. And because of the police violence, around only Almost 900 people were injured, and that's according to Catalan officials. So, if you wanted to make the point to the people of Catalonia that, hey, don't worry, Spain is a democracy and you'll have full freedom, liberty, and rights here, boy, you picked a curious way to do it. Oh, you're trying to vote? Okay, bar the doors, rip up the ballots, beat the people up trying to vote. That is not a winning strategy to win hearts and minds. Even if, and especially, especially if you claim to value democracy because that means that you know anyone that you disagree with you will meet them with violence that is not democracy yeah so. and and so look it is a very hard issue and it's an issue that a lot of countries struggle with and in the case of Spain they have 17 different regions if they all break up 
Uh, if Catalonia goes, God knows what goes next. And so it, the UK has to deal with this with Scotland from time to time. Uh, there's plenty of countries in the Middle East that have to deal with this. It's a issue that we all have to grapple with as a world and it's, there are no easy answers. But I know what the answer isn't, which is violence by the state. Yeah. So let them have their vote and then adjudicate legally whether it is valid or not valid and they let the consequences flow from there. And, and it might turn out that yes, some countries that we are used to wind up breaking apart and getting smaller and smaller. And later, they might come back together. I mean, look what happened in Europe. And I know that it goes back and forth, but they, there was war, endless wars in Europe. Hundreds of years of war, thousands of years of war, and one war was literally 100 years, right? right. And then they came back together in the European Union. And now again, you know, UK leaving. So the answer is definitely not violence, it's democracy and, and, a, and a legal process. So Spain, if you believe in your democracy and you believe in your legal process, let that reign and then uh, then you might have more credibility with the people of Catalonia. Absolutely, and and just real quick, uh, because I do want to do the story justice. So just to give you some historical context, this is not an issue that just arose. Um, there was a similar vote back in 2014, and uh, the majority of those who did make it out to the polls were uh, largely in favor of separating. The region held a symbolic poll in 2014, in which 80% of voters back complete secession, but only 32% of the electorate turned out. And the Spanish government is arguing that, hey, our constitution indicates that if you guys want to separate, if you want to do this, you need to open up that vote to all Spaniards. Um, and you know, they, they mention uh, the Spanish constitution in order to make that argument and it was revised in 1978. But there was also something super interesting that happened in the early 2000s. So back in uh, 2006, um, there was essentially an agreement by the parliament in Spain and the parliament in Catalonia that Catalonia would be its own separate nation. But then four years later, the courts came in and they're like, no, no. That's not going to happen, and so they essentially said, "You guys are a nat Catal Catalans are a nationality, but you are not your own nation." And so it's gone back and forth, further, you know, irritating people and frustrating people. So as Jake mentioned, it's a difficult situation; it's very complicated. But that is currently what's going on in Spain right now. And and Franco uh, back in the day uh, oppressed Catalonia, and that's how it began in the first place. So let's not make that mistake. If you like the Young Turks, you'll love Young Turks membership. TYTnetwork.com/slash/join.